I hate the zoo. The zoo is hot, you have to walk everywhere, the animals smell. I slipped on a leaf and busted my knee open. And so now I hate the zoo and I have the scar. And so I think of the zoo and I think of my scar and I just, it's traumatic. Hi guys, it's Candace Dillard Bassett and this is my Women's Health Body Scan. I think what I love most about my body is my hind part. I love my butt. I just, I think that my backside, it's indicative of a proud, black woman. I think in black history and in black culture, that part of our body has just always been so celebrated and ridiculed. And I think that black women have taken back our power in owning our bodies and owning our voluptuous curves. And I just really love that curve on my body. And my husband loves it too. He grabs it all the time. So actually, I don't have any tattoos. I think growing up, I used to want them, but people would always say to me, if you get one tattoo, you're gonna wanna get a bunch more, and I just never wanted to get addicted to tattoos because, you know, all the different things that I've done in my life, competing in pageants, being on television, acting, singing, the different things that I do, I wouldn't want tattoos to kind of get in the way of whatever my career does next or wherever my career takes me next. So I'm okay not having one, however, my husband and I have a nickname for each other. We call each other Swan. Like, what are you doing, Swan? Shut up, Swan. I think it's from Billy Madison. Yeah, so we are talking about getting like little tiny Swan tattoos. And I'll like tuck it like in between my finger, or, like under an arm. I'll tuck it somewhere where you nobody can see it but me and Chris. <laughs> so I don't have a lot of scars, but I have one like right here on my knee and you can still kind of feel it. And it's, it's old, I think I got it when I was seven or eight. So I hate the zoo, and this is probably why. So we were at the zoo, the zoo is hot, you have to walk everywhere, there's bees all over the place, the animals smell, I just never liked it. But this one time we went to the zoo with my godfather and my godbrother and sister, and we were running around and it was almost fall, so the leaves were like dry and crunchy. I slipped on a leaf and busted my knee open. And I'm like a really like girly, like soft and pink girl. I don't like to fall. So I fell and there was blood and I'm screaming. And so now I hate the zoo and I have this scar. And so I think of the zoo and I think of my scar and I just, it's traumatic. So, there's that. I have four piercings, so I have two in each ear. And I'm actually kind of nervous because my first hole from wearing all those heavy earrings when I was competing in pageants, my hole is like on its way out. Like I'm probably gonna have to have an ear surgery, which is like really scary because I'm, it's so long, it's like a, an old, beat up earlobe, it's not good. But I am, I do try to use my second hole more because I don't really use it a lot. I actually told Chrissy is to get me a pair of diamond earrings so that I can put them in my ear so he can save my hole. My other piercing that I wish that I had is my nose. I didn't get it in high school. This is so dumb because my boyfriend at the time in high school, because I told him, I was like, I think I want to get my nose pierced. He was like, nose piercings are trashy. And I didn't get it because he told me that it was trashy. And now I'm like, I wanna get it out of rebellion just to like give him the middle finger like, I can do whatever I want. So I still might get my nose pierced, like a little tiny dot. Okay, so my nail regimen, when it comes to my nails, I actually prefer for my nails to be really short. Done, but I like, I'm a student, I'm getting my MBA at Howard right now, so I'm always typing papers, I'm always writing emails, running my businesses, writing music, I like to type my music out sometimes. Like, I can't have those like gargantuan, like Cardi B nails, and I love them on Cardi B, but like, how do you, how do you wipe your butt? Like, how do you do anything? Like, you can't function, I can't dig in my purse, I can't, shower, because I wear exfoliating gloves in the shower. You can't put gloves on with them Cardi B nails. I go to the nail salon and they put the tip on and then I, they, I say cut it and they're like, is that okay? I'm like, no, shorter, shorter, shorter. And they're like, 
this is too short. I'm like, it's not your nail, sweetie. Just keep cutting. Like, they hate at the nail salon working with me because I just, I like a short, almost stiletto, but kind of almond shaped nail. And I like a nude. I like a, I call it a black girl nude. A nude that matches my skin. And it's simple and I feel like it's classic and it works for me. I'm obsessed with skincare. It is literally my true joy in life is slathering every serum, every essence, every toner under the sun onto my face. I could stay in the bathroom for hours with my steamer and my jade roller, just working on my skin. And when I turned 30, I really got serious about skincare because I was like, wait, okay, I'm moving into my 30s. I need to care about my skin because this is the skin I'm really gonna, I'm going to have this skin, God willing, in 50, 60 years, I gotta take care of it for real now. So I got into what's called the 10 step Korean skincare routine. And there are a lot of steps, there are 10, but it includes makeup removal, exfoliating, washing, toning, serums, face masks, sheet masks, all of these things I will spend hours in the bathroom doing. Some of my favorite products for sure are the, my two toners, the Fresh Toner, you can get it at Sephora, and the Glow Recipe Watermelon Toner. <gasps> it just like, especially when it's cold outside, it just like moisturizes the crap out of your skin. Like you leave feeling like you just come out of a spa getting a facial. Hair is a journey for me. Um, being a black woman, we have a love, hate, but just beautiful relationship with our hair. I am natural, which means I don't have a perm, and my hair that grows out of my head naturally is kinky, it's thick, it's big, it's unpredictable, it does its own thing, it defies gravity. I'm really, really proud of my hair because I grew up in a time where relaxers or perms were the thing, it was the norm. I got my first perm at five years old, which is like really young, you don't do that to your kids. New growth, my natural hair growing out of my scalp was considered bad and I had to you know, grow up and unlearn this shame around my natural, beautiful, thick, kinky hair. And I remember when I first started growing out my perm, I would be in class and I just couldn't keep my hands out of my head because I was just so enamored with this texture that belonged to me. It was just like a new self-discovery as a, a woman of color you know, in, in a world where we're not always appreciated for what we bring um, as individuals. So I, I really learned to love my hair, but it's also a lot of work. So I am religious about going to the salon. My stylist, her name is Steph the Hair Queen, and Steph the Hair Queen gets my hair together for me. Whether it's a weave, a blowout, just braids. Right now I'm rocking my braids. Felicia does a great job on my hair. This is just easy, and especially in the pandemic, I've loved just braiding it up, throwing it in a bun, and going to have a donut show. Just whatever I'm gonna do, I do it in the braids. I have a lot of like gut issues. I actually am like working with my doctor right now, talking through like how best to deal with. I have a lot of bloating, I'm lactose intolerant. I definitely have to stay away from dairy and I love dairy, I love ice cream, I love yogurt, I love milk, but I have to quell a lot of that stuff because it does like make me sick. And one of the things that my doctor has helped me to be more diligent with is fiber. And fiber can be difficult to ingest because it's, you know, you can't do like six boxes of fiber cereal, you'll, you'll never do anything else. So I take fiber pills, the Metamucil fiber capsule is great. It keeps me regular, it keeps my bloating down, and it just helps me to feel better about myself because when I'm bloated and I'm trying to be sexy and cute, doesn't really work because I look, you know, like I have a food baby and there's nothing in there but gas. It's, it's disrespectful. De-stressing for me, I love to sleep and I don't get enough of it. Sleep for me has become like a gift. So when I'm not doing anything or even when there's stuff to do, sometimes I'll just go take a nap 
and that for me is a great way to recharge. I also used to love journaling. Like in high school, I used to keep like, I had like stacks of journals. And you got, I got away from it because I was busy in college and then working, but in this like crazy pandemic time, I was able to kind of get back to writing in my journal. And with how crazy my life is with, you know, promoting my album and filming and doing all the things that I'm doing, we just moved into this new home. I'm trying to make it into a home for my husband and for myself. There's a lot going on. So sometimes for me, just being able to decompress and put my thoughts down on paper is amazing. Like, and it just, it makes me feel like a weight has been lifted off of me. And not to get spooky, but honey, you gotta stay prayed up. I, I definitely lean into my prayer life to just stay grounded and to stay centered and to make sure that there's an open line of communication between myself and God and he hears me and I hear him. And I always make sure that I thank God for allowing me to pray and hearing me pray. And that just, again, it makes me feel like I can conquer anything, I can do anything.